Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about our times today because the topic today is rapidly changing times, rapidly changing environment. So what are the characteristics of our times? The times that you're living today, do you have any idea? If I have to describe our current environment today, the times, how would you describe this? I said we will make it, make it interactive. So you have to engage in a dialogue with me. I'm not here to give a lecture. There are too many ambiguities all around. Too much of volatility. Too much of uncertainties. The environment is absolutely complex. It's very fluid. The market conditions, the competitive environment, the government rules. Who is going to become the next president of the United States? States of America, too many fluidity and volatility and uncertainty in the market. How is that going to impact the job scenario, employment opportunity, the industry, economy, and business? We have no idea. So these are the characteristics of our times. But, ladies and gentlemen, these are also exciting times. These are also times for new opportunities. I don't know, but if the way we, we travel um, in a taxi today, and the way we used to travel five years ago, by calling a taxi uh, with travel agent, a traditional taxi company, and waiting for three or four hours to tax, for the taxi to arrive, that has changed. The Olas and Ubers of this world have changed the way we commute. The way we live, the way we order food, the way we pursue our education. The MOOC courses, the massive open online courses are giving competitions to the biggest universities in the world. In future, we are not going to, we don't need a driver to drive a car. Driverless cars are the future. We don't need pilots to run to fly aeroplanes. Robos are going to do surgery in, in operation theater. The, the way we experience life, the way we experience products, the way we experience solutions, the way we live our life today has been transformed <laughs> dramatically. Innovation, creativity, technology, entrepreneurial mindset, exciting times, ladies and gentlemen. What are they doing to us? Any idea? They're transforming lives. Yes or no? They're transforming our lives. <coughs> if you have to reach, go from one place to another place, you have to just switch on your GPS, or GPRS, and then it will take you the destination, to the exact location, through the shortest route. That was not possible. I remember if the IRCTC website, there's a latency issue, or there's a delay of a couple of minutes, and then today we start cribbing. This website is hopeless. But we forget that there were times when we used to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, be at the railway station at the counter, wait for three hours for the counters to open and book our tickets. Today we can't wait for three minutes. So three minutes delay is just too, too much of delay. Technology has transformed our lives. What is the same thing doing to us? Innovation, creativity, passion, technology, what are they doing to us? What else are they doing? Do you agree? They are disrupting our lives. They are just disrupting our lives. What are they bringing to us? Stress, ambiguity, loss of market share, rat race, competition, uncertainty, too much of disruption. 
the times that you're living in today, my dear friends, are the most exciting, yet the most turbulent times in the history. Most exciting times and the most turbulent times. Be prepared. Be prepared. Because you don't care, the pilot who takes, who is flying the aeroplane doesn't care whether there's going to be turbulence, there's going to be a cyclone, there's going to be rains. He is prepared to take off and land. Can you imagine this scenario? This is a picture of a factory in China. Have you seen anything like this before? This factory used to employ 6,000 people. Today the factory has just 600 people. The rest of the 5,400 jobs have been taken away by machines, by robots. Exciting times because we'll get the best products with the best quality because robots will never fail us. They will give, give us the best experience. At the same time, people are going to lose jobs. People are going to lose the breadwinners in the family. People are going to go through stress, difficult times, turbulent times, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not here to scare you, to create panic in your minds. But I am here to prepare you. No ME institution, no ME school will teach you this. So all the six people you saw in that slide, all of them had the ability to dream. The ability to dream. Do you have a dream? Who has a dream? Can you raise your hands if you have a dream? Two hands went up. Three, four, five. There's about five or six hands went up. But I'm really happy that you have a dream. Because your Professors will not teach you how to dream. This is not something that you study in an educational institution. This is not part of any curriculum. You must have the ability to dream. You must have a goal. You must have a life-changing purpose in life. There was a marksman in the village. You know marksman? A person who has a bow and an arrow. And he was the famous marksman in that province, in that country. Every time he used to release the arrow, it used to hit the moon. The journalists became very curious. You know, the media men, men, they become very curious. They want to meet him. They want to find out why and how he makes it happen every time. They went to the village where this young man was sleeping. They went there. As they entered the village, everywhere they found arrows stuck into, bu into bull's eyes, on the trees, on the walls, on the buildings. Wherever they went, they found arrows of hit the bull's eye. They were really, really surprised. And how can this happen? They went to the young man's residence, they met him, and they asked him, Young man, how do you make it happen every time? The man replied, it's very simple. I release the arrow. It goes and hits somewhere. I go there and I draw circles around it. That's how I hit the bull's eye. You will stand up. You will fall down. You will stand up again. There's a wave of tsunami which will come and then that will knock you down. You will stand up. You will be almost knocked down. You will stand up. Are you prepared for it? Or are you willing to get you into a comfort zone? Security of a job, security of a multinational or a government organization, where you have everything defined, guaranteed, and everything comes in plenty without taking risks. The choice is yours. But ladies and gentlemen, there are only two paths. One path leads to excellence, 
other path leads to mediocrity. There's nothing in between. There's nothing in between. Either you lead an average life or you lead an excellent life. A life of superior excellence, immense success, profound meaning and fulfillment. There is another path which leads to mediocrity and average life. The choice is yours. You have to choose. Not your professors, not your parents, teachers, no one else. You have to choose one of these two paths. The path to excellence has risks, it has volatility, it has a lot of ambiguity. You're going to fail down, you are going to fall down again and again. But one of the life skills is resilience, which is the ability to bounce back. Ability to bounce back. Ability to if you conclude that this is not the right thing to do, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen in, it can happen only in the US, it can happen only in Bangalore or Mumbai, it doesn't happen in Bhubaneswar or Odisha. We don't have the right environment, we don't have the right atmosphere, we don't have the right um, opportunities, then you don't have the resilience. So one of the most important life skills is to bounce back. Today, do you know that three out of four startups fail? If you're reading um, business journals and magazines, you know that three out of four startups fail. Nobody looks down upon those startup, those entrepreneurs, those startups who start those companies. Some of those failures are celebrated today. They're celebrated today. Failure has become sexy. People are celebrated who fail but bounce back and then come and start something again and become successful. And we have seen in the case of Steve Jobs who has failed several times and who has bounced back every time he has failed. He has been thrown out of the company. Of, his, of the company that he created himself, and he bounced back. This life skill is something that no university or, or B school is going to teach you. <coughs> Yet another life skill. Before I talk more about it, let me share a story again with you. Another young man, like the, the marksman, there was another young man who wanted to learn music. And he went to his, uh, went to the best teacher in the country. He said, Guruji, I want to learn music. Can you accept me as your student? The teacher said, yes, I can accept you. The young man asked the teacher, Guruji, how many, how long it will take for me to learn music from you? The teacher said, it will take six years. The young man said, six years, that's too long. But Guruji said, that's what it takes. The student said, Guruji, I know something about music. Actually, I know a lot of things about music. I don't think it will take six years for me. The Guruji said, okay, tell me what you know about music. The teacher proud, sorry, the student, the young man proudly explained everything he knows about music. And then with a lot of pride and inquisitiveness on his face, he looked at the teacher and said, Guruji, now tell me how much time it will take to learn music. The teacher said it will take 12 years to learn music. This guy was paranoid. He was angry. He said, are you a real guru or a fake guru? I told you I know something about music. Earlier you told me it will take 6 years. I have explained to you what I know about music. Now I was saying it will take 12 years. The Guruji had a smile on his face. He said, son, everything that you know about music is wrong. It will take six years for you to unlearn what you have learned. And it will take another six years to learn music. So six years plus six years is twelve years, as simple as this. This is an interesting story, which means Life is graduate from this new school, you have the ticket to success 
I'm sorry, you are grossly mistaken again. The MBA degree will just be a beginning. All your life you have to learn, unlearn, and you have to relearn. For that, for that you have to believe that you have to learn, you have to unlearn, and you have to relearn. The moment you will believe that you are the most learned person, the learning stops. The moment the esteemed, for the esteemed professors and teachers of this prestigious institution, the moment you think you are a teacher, your ability to, to teach disappears. The biggest misconception in this world is I am a teacher. I am a student in the journey of life. And that's the beginning of learning. Albert Einstein once stood up where the most famous, most learned white scientists of the times were sitting. He stood up, he went to the blackboard and drew a circle. And he asked this famous scientist and the wise people of the country, if this circle represents all the wisdom in this world, what percentage of this circle is known to you? Somebody said 5%, somebody said 10%, some very famous person said 20%, and so on. Einstein went back to the circle. He just put it back on the circle. to complain and pass the blame to somebody else. But when you become part of the solution, it's about going out of a comfort zone and trying to find a solution to the problem. So that's why this famous person said, if you're not happy with something, change it. If you can't change it, don't complain about it. Don't create the tension. So ladies and gentlemen, as you grow up in the corporate ladder, or in an enterprise, or in the society, or in your own business, or on your social venture, nobody would appreciate if you if you crave and complain. People would love you if you say, here's a problem, I'm going to solve it. That's an important life skill to have. I have a network. We simply ignore it. We do not believe it's important. I know many people will say, why do I need to network? My work will speak for itself. Why do I need to network with anybody else? Why do I need to build relationships with others? Why do I need to go and make new friends? Why do I need to know people in the corporate, people in the industry? Why do I need to go and spend time with my faculty member outside my class? Talk to him or her about my problems. Take his or her opinion. Why do I need to talk to people in the industry? Ladies and gentlemen, you will realize the value of network as you move into the corporate career. It's extremely important. Ability to network is extremely important because we are living in an interdependent world. We are living in a world where the collective, where the togetherness, collectiveness leads to success. We are living in a world where you will draw inspiration from others. You are living in a world where you need valuable insights from other people. You need to connect. You need to network. You never know somebody could become a mentor. Somebody could become your coach. Somebody could give you a very important lead for a job. Somebody could give an important lead to pursue an important qualification. Ability to network is an important skill. Practice this from now on. Don't wait for your entry into the corporate world. Just go out on network. Do you do that? How many of you reach out?
regular with social media, but in, in terms of connecting with friends and uploading the pictures, so they have the picnics and then the social opinions. That social media can be used to build opinions. They can be used to mobilize movements. Lots of movements in the present world have been triggered by social media. And all of you can become citizen journalists. And social media today, corporates and organizations are employing social media aspects. My organization has roles called social media champion. These are paid jobs, ladies and gentlemen. Because like politicians, like governments, corporations have also understood the importance of social media, the strength and the power that it can bring. It has the speed, it has the connect, it has the intensity and it can mobilize employee branding and employee opinion in a great manner. Most organizations today are using social media to build an employer brand. You go to LinkedIn, you'll find virtually any company having their page on LinkedIn or on Facebook or that matter. So new media literacy is not just social media, it's a different media like blogs and white papers and then uh, videos and all podcasts which are actually coming up a very powerful mediums of learning, engaging, communicating, building brand, networking, and so on. And you have to become social media literate. Because tomorrow organizations will ask you to undergo even complex courses and complex subjects using online e-learning modules. You need to be, you know, new media literate. You need to be new media savvy to be able to do that. You will unfortunately not have your professors there in corporate organizations available and teaching you or coaching you all the time. You need to depend on this media in that life span. You also need to know how to manage social media. Another big challenge all of us are facing today is, a, is our inability to deal with cognitive load management. It's just too much of load, too much of information coming our way. You switch on our, your smartphone. Do you, do you use smartphones? Okay. The moment you switch on your smartphone, they say you have about 200 messages on WhatsApp, 30 messages on Twitter, 50 messages on Facebook, 50 messages on, 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 on email. And I meet friends and then say, sorry, I sent you a message on WhatsApp. You did not reply. I said, you did? I said, yes, I did yesterday. I said, I'm sorry. I haven't got time to read your messages because I'm still dealing with 200 messages where we believe we are driven by materialistic aspirations, by our dream to make and accumulate wealth and money. But there is no other formula than for success. There is no better formula than this. Bill Gates, when he started Microsoft, he had no idea that he will become the richest man in the world. He had no idea. He just had one dream. He said, I'm going to make a software which a common man can use. Because software before that was very difficult, was very complex. The DOS, DOS and the, the, the Unix, and the other <coughs> software which used to be there were very, very complex for common people to use. So Hubert, he brought in the, the, the user interface which made software. He brought in Windows which made people to become successful. If you believe that this gentleman is talking about some idealistic thoughts. Everybody comes and talks about, from our childhood we know that we have to love and care for each other. But these people have demonstrated that if you have love and care for the humankind, you can become successful businessmen. You can become successful professionals. You can become successful in your life. Not just a yogi or sadhu, but you can become a successful businessman. And that's what the researchers are saying today that organizations, business leaders are lacking emotional intelligence today, the ability to people. So ladies and gentlemen, young men and women, please do not ignore this aspect where you have to develop empathy for people, empathy for your team members, empathy for your customer, empathy for your colleague, empathy for your manager in the organization. You see the difference that you are going to have in your life. So these are the lifestyle, life skills which I have put together, not this is any books, 
that all that I have experienced in my life by following some of them, but not by not following some of them and learning that I need to imbibe these qualities. And these qualities have made me, have brought me where I am today. As you embark on this new journey, begin a new life, begin a new phase in your career, as you get ready to take off, you have my best wishes. Thank you very much. All the best.